15. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 15 is coming on quick. Yeah. 15, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, we're doing a bit different here. Today, so, no mics. Yes. So what's happened is our producer Noel couldn't make it. Um, he had a totally illegitimate excuse. He had to go to the doctor. Um, totally illegitimate. Boo! Bullshit. Boo! I hope he doesn't make it out of the coma. Well, I hope they take him off life support. I mean, we're looking good. It's already been six days. Yeah, which I guess is a positive. But I'm kind of just upset because he didn't get back to me about it. I messaged him. I was like, "Hey, how you going, man?" And it's it's a principle. At the it's end of the day. Yeah, exactly. It's a principle. You I, figure I, it out. I, yeah, I checked on him. Feels weird doing this without mics in our hands as well. It does. Yeah. Well, anyway, may as well introduce the show. So, uh, we are the Sausage Boys. The Sausage Boys podcast. I am Jackson, uh, your host. To my left, we have... What's good? It's your boy. Terry Cruz of Sydney. It's your boy Young. Let's boycott Noah. Let's, <laughs> let's dox Noah. And... Um, yeah, where does he live? What's his... Newtown. Newtown. He lives in Newtown. Newtown. He lives in Newtown. He lives on a street. <laughs> yeah, whereabouts in Newtown is it? Because I know we've got a lot of um, fans that are down for the cause. You know what we should do? We'll just drop little hints throughout the episode. And oh, if anyone yes. Is stealth- yes. If anyone is clever and stealthy enough and good enough of a detective, they can put together the code, work it out, uh, find Noah's house and murder him. Because we're, yeah, we're not saying to not murder him. We're just saying where he lives. We're just saying that, like, hey, if you got a bit of free time, this is a guy that lives. Who does he live with? Oh, this is like the joke on The Simpsons. Um, Skinner's trying to like dob on. No, he's trying to like congratulate Lisa for dobbing on other kids. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, I better do it anonymously. Anonymously, saying it over the intercom. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, he goes, L Simpson. No, that's too obvious. Uh, Lisa, Lisa S. <laughs> <laughs> And you're other boy. Oh yeah, and you I'm got one more right. Boy. Yeah, uh, hey man, what's good? It's your boy Big Boo, aka Mr. Fine. How about yourself? Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I'm kind of bummed out because I think I've missed the boat now, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I just have a name. <laughs> all, I, all I do now is say, hey, it's your host Jackson, I pass it to you for a couple minutes. Yeah. You have the best time. <laughs> pass it to you. It be with a celebration, it's fireworks. Comes back to me and I'm just like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so to me again. Um, let's see, what's, what's, a good, what's a good nickname? Why don't you call yourself Young Young Toon Squad? Uh, <laughs> young Mustache? <laughs> Heterodon. <laughs> Heterodon. Um, yo, it's your boy Hetero Harry. It's your, um, it's your boy Double H. Uh, straight Samuel. Um, straight Samuel. Definitely not gay Derek. What's <laughs> up, boy Jared? What's up? Um, oh, yeah, what's new? What's new this week, Bush? Uh, there's nothing going on in the world right now except for, um... Uh, a possible... Biden. A possible attack on a local podcast producer from Sydney. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is going to be going on. That's probably the only thing. I mean, if we say don't do it, like, how do we legally... Uh, we could basically say that... Say that if you do do it, you will be rewarded. Handsomely. But not by the Sausage Boys directly. Eh, maybe by me. Yeah, is it illegal to... I don't know if you can admit that. Is it illegal to ask to kill someone? You yeah. know. Oh, did you hear about that site? That, um... It was like a hiring hitman site. It was like set up by the FBI, I think, over in America. And they were basically just catching people that wanted to actually hire a hitman. That sounds like something you would have done in high school. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just catfishing people that wanted other people dead. That's yeah. crazy. I don't know. I'm kind of... Imagine how upset you'd be to find that out. Yes, yeah, like first I was on to catch a predator. Trying to meet an underage girl. And now I'm trying to kill Chris Hansen. Now I'm trying to get her parents killed. <laughs> <laughs> so I could step in legally as a guardian. And you're getting caught on both ends. What do you mean I can't be a stepdad? I'm her best friend. <laughs> you know, Isn't that right, Emily? <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Silent. What, 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 what we talked about before. What we talked about before. You don't want to say it, just write it. I don't know how to weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Emily. Oh, Emily. Silly goose. You Silly know what, goose. 
Uh, I did see something this week, the silliest goose on the internet. Mm. Are you guys across Mario Judah? Yes. I was just playing something by... Oh, he's Link. With Cardi. Yeah. He leaked it? Yeah, I think so. So, are you familiar with this guy? Ooh. He's this, this silly kind of goth guy that had that song about... Fire oh, very rough. Yeah. He's um like a Disney villain. Oh, okay. But yes, exactly. But he's kind of singing over like this trap beat. Yeah, let's play. you can play a little bit. I think we can get away with yeah. how long your time is up. I think he's do- it's a good um, way to for people to realise what his name was. Because I don't like his name. I just know him as the guy that sung that song. Die very, is Die Very Rough the song that you know? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, I got, it. I got the video here. It kind of sounds like... Yeah. Do you, have you seen any of it before? No. Oh, what? So he's just like this. He's just kind of like emo trap. But he sounds like a like a loser. Yeah. Uh. uh, uh. I wonder why Techno and haven't signed him yet. Oh, yeah. Wow. He is like Tech Nine's. He's like he's almost like what mm. he is like an Aryan to Hitler. What <laughs> this guy is to Tech Nine. Yes. He's like yes, exactly. Like, like Hitler would look at like some young twenty-one-year-old German blonde-haired, blue-eyed athlete and be like that is Mario Judah. Judah. Yes. <laughs> Mario Judah is just as corny. Just appeals to these kind of like lost. Hip hop heads that kind of also like Pokemon, yeah, but want to kind of let out a little bit of anger. Like they haven't really established oh, themselves as metalheads. You know what? It gives me like um, vibes of like what do you call them? Like theater kids. Yes. Like do you remember it? Like uni. And yeah. It was yeah. just the theater kids that run around. I don't know if any, if anyone went, went to like a regular kind of uni that doesn't have so much of the arts. I guess uh, the uni that we went to and met at. Like, there'll just be theatre kids walking around the halls, mm. just singing from the top of the stairs down to the bottom. There'll be, like, five kids at the bottom. And I keep... I, I'm saying kids, but these are, like... 18, 20, yeah, 18, 18, 18, 20, early 20s. Yeah. And we're just yelling out, like, homophobic slurs. <laughs> and be like, what? What? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Just trying to really get away with using homophobic slurs <laughs> against them. Because most of them happen to fall into that area. This is a slur. And this is homophobic slur. Slur. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird vibe. And those people are out there. I guess that's what like all hip hop heads like. You know what? Just nerd hip hop heads. Nerd hip hop heads. Kind of like guys that literally would probably listen to. Guys that would play of the time. Pokemon Go. Seriously. Yeah. Like mm. they would go out on the street to catch Pokemon. Or actually be like, I actually have like the proper Yu-Gi-Oh! What is it? The... Yeah, the, the, uh, shot, the, the bracelet. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, bracelet yeah. thing. I don't have it at home. I seriously have it. And that's home. why you really like Mario Dude. Oh, man, that yeah. so cool. yeah. appeals to you. Yeah. yeah. If you won, you got to take the other person's best card. Wow. Gosh. Um, which is brutal. I had like, I had friends and we all had the sickest decks. Everyone was playing in the year and we were like, the... The no one was, was no one was getting punani. You'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, every and I think a lot of the girls actually had to start changing schools. It was like I'm not going to please, entertain please, please, please. any of these men. I think it was an age where the Boys. girls could kind, of, could kind of get around it, though. They'd be like, "That's actually impressive that you just played that blue eyes white dragon." You sacrificed. Oh, it. really? Yeah. It's like, oh, blue eyes white dragon, no rhymes. Like, oh. you know. <laughs> Man, Jackson with that blue eyes white trap. <laughs> I'll show you. Oh, my. now I'm gonna use my trap card. Flood. All the girls are like. <laughs> I'll show you my hidden figure in Zodiac later tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not that much of a loser. Is that right, Hidden Figure Exodia? Yeah, I'm trying to piece together my Exodia. Um, you can piece together my Exodia later tonight. All I'm missing is two legs and an ass. Um, <laughs> my husband got red eyes when I was with a black dragon on the weekend. Um, had a black dragon inside of me, my husband had very red eyes. He was angry. Um, I'm not gay, I must have been given a spell by that dark magician. <laughs> What 
else was there? Red Eyes Black Dragon. Oh, you said Red that. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's why I tried it. Uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon. I think there was this one very famous as well. Um, that demon guy with the big horn. Oh, oh, oh Summon Skull. Yeah, Summon oh, Skull. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. remember that. Yeah. Um, Summon Skull. Summon Skull. Oh, it's not like that. Jimmy Brain. Summon. <laughs> summon. Yeah, yeah, some give me a bit of a skull. Count on your girl forehead. I got some, skull, I got some skull. skull for you later tonight. I got some uh, on this skull. I got some on the you belly. Can summon, you can summon this skull later tonight. I got some on the floor, some on the sheets, some on skull. I'll give you... <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, sir, is that a tuna belly? No, this is a salmon skull. Yo, girl, give me some of that skull. Did you have Yu-Gi-Oh? In your school? Yeah, of course. But we would nobody had like a deck. We just draw shit on the paper. There's oh no yeah, papers. yeah. You get a piece of paper. You drew the Yu-Gi-Oh cards individually. This mate, why? Why the wind's taking it? Oh wait. Oh sorry, I got ink. I got water all over it. What's that? Wait, wait, do you really have like a deck on your hand? Yeah. That is zero. That is balling, bro. I didn't bring it to school though. But if I was a chick, that was only for weekend pumps. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Cause bro, if I was a chick and I see a guy with that, I'd be like, bro, he's 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 bald and that man you, you is don't... permanently having his balls drained. But you, you <laughs> it's nearly... not one moment where he has full balls. <laughs> you really would think that though, back in the day. Oh, you would. If if you're yeah. a chick and you saw some dude just shredding <laughs> on you, yeah. If that's what everyone was doing too, and you were the don. Exactly. It's kind of like, it's, it's a whole hier- hierarchy thing where it's like, I am going to gravitate towards the most powerful man in the room. And that happens to be the man that could, has Exodia. And he has a whole arm. <laughs> and here's the thing, there's like levels of coolness. So what you have to do is just make sure everyone finds that cool. You just have to find a group. Yeah. And then be the best at that. Yeah. So like any of those kids that were playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, Everyone was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah. But if any of them were like, you know what, I might actually go like start playing footy with the boys in the year above instead. You would have to you'd quickly be like, no. What you'd you have to, have to shut that down. Yeah, you have to shut that down. Because the whole thing's going to fall apart. And they're like, Because well, you're, you're peaking right now. And they're going, but mm. you only want this. Uh, we were just reporting for like 15 minutes, the thing crashed, and so now we're starting again. Yeah. Well, yeah, it didn't actually crash. We just didn't press record. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we were being absolutely hilarious. So what we're doing. I guess this is it. We just gotta recap it all quickly, right? Yeah. What's good to your boy? Uh, Terry Chris, uh, let's get Noah. Um, uh, Alright, so what happened was Noah, our producer, couldn't make it today, so now it's just us. We're recording with a, a Taz cam, so if the sound is different or whatever, I guess that's the case. Hopefully it'll, it'll, pick up, it'll pick up the, the, um, GoPro, yeah, the, the GoPro, GoPro pick up the sound. Do it. And that'll be fine? Yeah. So we don't have to recap? Nah. Should we restart now then? Yeah. So, we just erase that, we've got that first part, mm-hmm. and then we'll start again. Or we can just, or we can just go from where we were, yeah. and just chop it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah, we start yeah. recording now, and then go from where we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than this whole next two minutes I've spent recapping everything. Yeah. No, that's alright, we can just keep going there, just cut that part out. I don't want any of this to cut out, be cut out. I want people to know... How see how we really go. Yeah, see, this is this is Sausage Boys podcast at the end of the day. All right, all right. It's not all going to be George Carlin levels of comedy, amazing takes, <laughs> bits. Some of it's real. Sometimes, sometimes we just break it down what we're doing. So the back end. That's what the people really want to know about. They want to know about the back end. They want to know, hey, what's what's this? What's a task cam? What is it? What is a GoPro? What even is a podcast? <laughs> What's a podcast? Who am I? Who am I? Who are we? What are we even doing here? That's what people want to know. What's it all for? That's why people come to this podcast to know what it's all for. You can go to this podcast if you if you don't have a purpose right now. We're these boys. We're here to help you out. We're kind of like a... We're like a, Jordan Peterson. We're like a church of the future. Oh, yes. We're, we're Jordan Peterson, but you actually should be worried about some of the opinions we have. Because we're not going to hide the fact we actually do not like women. Whereas Jordan Peterson would use a whole bunch of fancy words to dance around the idea and kind of we're not, insinuate yeah, he doesn't like women and women should be in the kitchen. We're we, not politicians. Mm. We're just bigots. Yes. We're very bigoted. We're very close-minded. 
we don't really like uh, getting new information. We're stuck in our ways. And happy being stuck. And happy being stuck in our ways. Like it works for me. Mm. I know I've probably got a lot of family members that are like, can you just stop thinking about yourself for once? (laughs) How about you try to imagine what it's like in someone else's shoes? These the words actually have consequences. And I'm happy to lose that sort of relationship. We don't need it. You don't need it. They've done everything. It's done. It's done. We're Um, grown now. I'm here. I'm here now, and I don't need family anymore no yeah and that's what we're trying to say to a lot of our listeners that leave your family it's about you and go on Facebook live go on Facebook live if you have to do you know what I mean scare them a little bit you know the reason I went to check the Taz cam was because I was about to drop some fire ooh is this about you yeah still I guess so but <laughs> What were, what, was I, what were we going to say about Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, do you think there were some kids, like, peaked at that stage? And they literally are, like, what, in their 30s? And were like, I peaked when I was in year three at primary school playing Yu-Gi-Oh. That was my no, absolute peak. I don't think it is because it's such a shallow roof to transcend. You're going to be better at something else. Or are you? You're going to be the best... No, because even then, if you're that good when you're in year three, then you're going to play for the next couple of years. You're not just going to stop in year three. It stops at year four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, um, all that stuff stops at year four. That's when you start getting... You were right with the sports. That's when sports take over. And then probably in year five or six, that's when women start to take over. Usually around year 10, that's when boys start to take over you start to kind of get sexually interested in other men. Yeah. And then usually at around 21, you've gone over, those, over that stage, you want to settle down, and that's when family takes over and your kids. Yeah. And it's just this whole this process. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think... Because we do make all like these like jokes that are just like, just silly homophobic kind of jokes and whatever. We do make those jokes, but what a lot of our listeners don't understand is... That everyone has a gay period. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, there's, you? there's you've got a problem. You are probably legitimately a homosexual. Because it's not it's not gay to have a gay period. It's not. No, you kind of go through it. Mm. You find God. And yes. Then yes. You make a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you kind of basically you're praying every single night, suppressing yeah. those yeah. very real feelings. And maybe one day you will wake up with like blood on your penis, and that would be a gay period. It's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> and then I can start. What if gay people had periods? Would you still be gay? I mean, like I, if you had you, you could be a gay person, but you're going to start having periods. I guess so. What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> if you started having your periods, will you still be gay? Oh no, yeah. no, you you only have periods if you are gay. Straight people don't have periods. <laughs> but that is like. <laughs> <laughs> so your question is. <laughs> so your question is. Yes. What you, you, get to, you get to be with Dua Lipa, but you have to lose one of your toes. Ooh. Do you do it? Can it can it be any toe? Can I choose the toe? Ah, uh, yes, 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 and then yeah. But then you have well, to actually, no, it has to be one of the major two. Oof, nah, no, no. What, the toe or the second toe? You have to lose one on either either foot. You can let's say you just lose the second. What was it? Toe? Yeah. The, second toe. The index. Yeah, index toe. Ooh, I feel like I don't. I wouldn't need that much because I guess you you didn't say the uh, thumb. Exactly. Yeah. Is, is it called that, a is it called a thumb toe or feet? I, I don't even know what the correct terminology. You know what? We we know all the fingers on a hand, but not our toes. Yeah, we've got like the root finger, ring finger, pinky, index. pointer finger. Thumb, thumb. You've got the the garden fingers. The, yeah, the white power sign. Um. But then when it comes to toes, yeah, what is this? What is the lead one called? 
Is that yeah. called a toe when the other ones are called nubs? I think they're, they're, that's called a toe it, when they're nubs, aren't they? I call it a big toe. Big toe. Oh, yeah. that's, that's right, isn't it? I think the other ones are called nubs. Mm. I heard that once. That, that The only thing that's called a toe is the first one. All right, okay, so the others are called lose nubs. one of your index yeah, toe for index toes or nubs. I think, yeah, I mean, for like for one night only or like the whole life? Um, for a year. Ooh, that's yes. a good argument. That's a good argument. A year, though. A year. It's, I mean, yeah. she's she's on like a, a top of her game right now. She's going to make me a, a whole lot of money. I'm, go, I'm going to be like Britney Spears X. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I guess when it comes to like the financial part, it's a bit too easy to do because of course you're going to take it. Maybe you can't get any money of it, out of it and emotional gratification from being with her for a year. I don't need that. Yeah. Have my toe. Really? Yeah, yeah whatever. You, what, you're going to keep your toe? Yeah, you I'm going to keep my toe. You're yeah. going to keep your toe? Yeah. Hold oh. on to it. Yeah. You know, but have a year with Dua Lipa. I would lose my toe. I don't I think I need, gonna lose I don't think toe. need that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I, I guess think yeah, this person when I'm with now okay. is all I really need. So Pizza I don't really want anyone else. Right. Right. I'm not even saying no. that. I'm just like, I don't think I need to lose that. You wouldn't need to experience that. You'd have to be desperately single with no option. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. To lose your time. And that's why it's so appealing to me. I, I don't... I mean, you don't have to really... But I guess you said, like, you, you both kind of would say she's a 10. Mm, oh, no. Oh, what? I don't what? think I ever said she was a 10. You definitely said no, she was I a 10. I didn't say that. You, I was like, oh, I don't know. And you're like, are you serious? Yeah, well, you're so my favorite band now. Things change. <laughs> <laughs> Things change. No, I don't think she's a 10. Strokes your favorite band? You wouldn't want to get some strokes to do a lever? She would be at least 8.5. 8.5? Yeah. At least, when I mean, 8.5 is like high, high note. So I, I would say I put Michael Robbie 8. Okay. Who would you go, who would you give like a 10 to? Ooh, I'll, 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 I'll give like a 9 to Kerry Hilson. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know who that is. Ooh, wee. Ooh. Bro, Ooh, wee. Kerry Hilson is. What's her Kerry name? Hilson. Kerry Hilson. Kerry Hilson. Kerry Hilson. Gosh, Man, she, she was wild. Ooh. And she's part of the Hillsong Church. Yes. yes, she actually founded it. They actually, it's Hillsong's actually after her music. You saying Hill song? Hillson. Uh, Hillson. Kerry Hillson. Oh, Kerry Hillson. She, Man, has a son. she is. Good oh, lord. What was that Nelly song that she came in? Uh, that music video. Party, party, Okay. Party people. Yeah. Remember party people with my Nelly? Oh. And then Kerry Hilson comes here right at the end and says, Hip hop isn't dead. We'd like that show. Oh, okay. and she's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking yeah, yeah. in the room. And I think my, my first song I, I, I listened was the song with Kanye West and... Pretty Girl Rock. Yeah. Remix. And Chris Breezy? Chris Breezy. Wait, was it? Chris was it Pretty Girl Rock? No, no, it was not Pretty Girl Rock. Uh, it was, was Neo and Kanye West. Oh, what was the song called? Um... Apparently, Kerry Hilson said something against Beyonce and she got blackballed because of it. Really? Yeah, I just saw that. Oh, yeah, that just came up. Yeah. yeah. I think, do you think, you've seen her now, this is Jackson's first time seeing Kerry Hilson. How would you compare her to Beyonce? Do you think she's a comp competition? Yeah. Yeah. I think so as well. Maybe, they've both got very pretty faces. Oh, yeah, knock you down, gosh. Of course. Was she with Jay? No. No. Man, imagine if... Kanye got Kerry Hilson, he becomes completely normal. Yeah. Imagine if, like, the trajectory that that would have had if they became an item. I don't like seeing Kanye like this. It's like, you're sitting on Joe Rogan screaming at Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> crying during a speech for a presidential campaign. <laughs> no, it's just like, he's so weird. Like, I don't want to see him hanging out with a woman. You don't want to see him? <laughs> I think he's he's gone beyond the point of women now. I can imagine Kanye walking in this video shoot and they're like, oh, so here's what we're doing, yeah. And he's like, no, I'm being with her in this video. They're like, actually, Kanye, we've got a director here that's yeah. written the whole thing. Your role is more just as a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You just get a rap. You're the bad boy. You're just gonna come in for a little pee. And he's like, I'm a genius. I don't even think he would have been talking like that. No, oh, okay. Imagine if he was really humble back then. Nokia, yeah, when did that come out? Uh, Man, that was a bang up. 2008, I think. I'm straight up gonna add that to my playlist. When did the whole Taylor Swift thing happen? Ooh, 2005? No, I think 2010. 10. Because that's when Obama was on. Oh, what about the weekend getting snubbed at the Grammys? Oh, that was wild. That's weird, isn't it? He's it's like, so ridiculous. I think he's got because that's probably the best song of the year. Oh, it was the it was the number one song of the year according to Spotify. That's so weird. Man. Like by such a large amount as well, and like it, musically and kind of critically, is probably one of the greatest songs of the. Everyone loved it. Yeah, yeah everyone absolutely loved it. It was perfect. But then he just got. The album was perfect as well. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I was yeah. thinking, because I was thinking back over the songs, and I was like, well, it wasn't even just a single. No, that whole album yeah. was probably the best album of the year. What are the, yeah. Who I'm got sorry. it? Who got album of the year? Um, I think Justin Bieber got a nomination. I think, did Taylor Swift release, release an album? I think Taylor Swift got a nomination. Um, there was someone else. What's that? Some rock group. Some of those. That pop rock group got it. Oh, like Imagine Seven Dragons. Seconds. I, think, I think it may have been Imagine Dragons. Grammy. But there were a few nominations. I was like, I don't even know. I don't remember that album. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it was so progressive and kind of on the on the ball with everything else. Like even when it came down to the rap nominations, like they had like Freddie Gibbs nominated. They had like really, I think Benny the Butcher and stuff like that. They were wow. really on point when it came to uh, the other ca- other categories. And it's almost like the weekend thing almost um, completely loses validation for all the other good work they did. When they've done everything right. They've done it? everything right this but year, apart from the number one thing. Do you know who Billie Eilish won album and song of the year with Bad Guy? And um, the album that Bad Guy's off when we Yeah, that was great. Year. But That was great. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Is this correct? 2020, Igor? Was that this year? Oh, no, it was last year. Oh, this is last, last year. year. So I'm pretty sure. So what's this? Sixty third. Um, oh yeah, true. Bad guy did come out last year. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And I think last year Billie Eilish won all the Grammy awards as well. Oh no, wait. The Grammys haven't been on. No, they haven't been on yet. That's just the nominations. Oh, nominations. Have come out. Yeah. He didn't get a nomination for anything. Um, that is ridiculous. Which is, it's like a joke. It's so funny. Where it's so like silly. Janae Akira. Okay. Okay, yeah. Janae Aiko, yeah. Aiko. She got nominated for Album of the Year. What album? I don't even remember her album. Chilombo. I think I heard some of it and I was like, this is not like the Janae that I... Hang with no music. Women in Music. Women in Music, what? Women in Music, ooh. Oh yeah, Hang's album in Music. <laughs> yeah. So we got Taylor Swift. I think Hang's uh, album is good. Dua Lipa. Post Malone. I don't know who Black Pumas are. I don't know who Jacob Collier is. Oh yeah, I do actually. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I ridiculous. Mean, who's going to take that? I don't even... Oh, uh, Julie Bar, I would yeah, put I think my money on. Yeah, I think taking it. I would lose a toe to sit at these Grammy Awards. <laughs> um, just, just smell the seat that she sat on. Like, this is so weird, man. There's so many songs in this that I haven't heard. Mm. I guess because the Strokes aren't nominated. <laughs> wait, I can do it. Do I have some work for him? Oh wait, the, what? Maybe oh, she, she does, doesn't she? The Strokes did put down an album. I was about to say they did. I was listening to this. Wait, was I listening to the Strokes? Who was it? No, I was <laughs> nominated. <laughs> <laughs> strokes nominated for album of the year. <laughs> really? Literally album of the year? Yeah. Oh, and rock album. Of the year. Oh, rock album of the year. That would be um, hilarious if it was album of the year. Oh. Change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> Very smooth. Yeah. Very smooth. <laughs> um, uh, no, this is hectic. Uh, you know, what's his name? Oh, Howard Stern. Old yes. Radio Shock Jock kind of guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was watching an old clip of his show, mm-hmm. and I mean, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This is one of the most red hot offensive things I've seen. Yeah, yeah. So. That was his whole thing. It's, it's insane, though, man. I just went in this rabbit hole and I was just like, God, times have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, but what he's doing in this video is he's having a competition. It's called Battle of Wits. Oh, right. Um, 
So he's just got two people and he's making them answer questions. Yeah. Um, and he's got in there Beetlejuice. Yes. Do, do you know Beetlejuice? Yeah, yeah. Do you know Beetlejuice? Yes. Yeah. I've literally been watching a whole bunch of Howl's Stern, like, recently. Oh, you have as well? Recently. Yeah. I saw, yeah. like, the Wigger contest, Small Penis contest, um, like, a lot of those porn star contests. It's insane like, it's when you have them on show, isn't it? Yeah. But this one, in particular, I was watching, so we have Beetlejuice, who's like... Is it a kind of dwarfism or something that he has? Mm. He's got a bunch of stuff, I would yeah, say. He's like, he's like a ghost. He can be anything. <laughs> he's got a lot of... His diagnosis would be very... Um, there'll be a long list. <laughs> How he long has you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's he got? Um... Yeah, but Beetlejuice is wilding out in there, man. Like, he's saying, like, he, he wants to have sex with the, the woman who sits in there. He's like, I'm going to have sex with you. <laughs> um, well, she's like, I'm very flattered, very flattered. And he's like, I don't know what, honey, I'm going to have sex Robert. with you. <laughs> I'm going to have sex with you, Robin. Oh, Beetlejuice, you're crazy, man. And then the other guy that they had on there um, was someone who was, like, quite clearly disabled. Yeah. This is the person Beetlejuice was versing in this competition. Yeah. And his name was Billy the Arler. Oh, yes. Wait, did you... We watched the same one. Did he also have um, one of the uh, Grand Wizard clan member on this? No. No, no. This one was Beetlejuice versus this guy. Oh, gosh. Billy yeah. the Arler. And that's what they were just calling him to his face yeah. and everything. And this guy is, like, missing his, like, four front teeth. Yeah. He's got these, like, thick glasses on. It's just terrible, man. I felt terrible watching it. Because, I mean, I wasn't like... There's just that part of you that... Did he have a Superman costume on? No. No, I don't know. Not not in this one. But he's going... um, They're asking questions like, Beetlejuice, what's the number between two and four? Oh. And he's like, yeah, 25. (laughs) (laughs) It's hilarious. Yeah, and and it's funny because Beetlejuice is so, like, outspoken and Mm. just raucous and whatever. You think he actually has the quid there. Yeah. And then the other guy, Billy, is just nailing it. He's just nailing every question, getting every arm right. And they're like, Beetlejuice, spell red. And he's like, (laughs) T-S-L-R-K. And I don't know if he's putting it on or whatever, but this is on YouTube, man. Mm -hmm. How... I don't understand how that's possible, even. He had crazy stuff. But that was, again, he was like... I think he may have been one of the first notorious shock jock. Shock jock guys. Well, like yeah, his whole was, purpose was to kind of be like, oh, did you see what that radio host was doing? Oh my gosh. Like he literally gets like a clan member on in like full gear and like has him on talking to Beetlejuice. And <laughs> <laughs> what are they talking about? Just about like um, politics. Yeah, and Beetlejuice is a Republican. And he was saying how he. <laughs> <laughs> is Beetlejuice a Republican? Yeah. Okay. Which was hilarious. And he was just saying kind of just his opinions on races and stuff. He's talking like about that. cooking. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, no. Beetlejuice was um, a Democrat, um, apart from when it came to Jewish people. Like, he's like, he hates Jewish people. Beetlejuice does. Beetlejuice does. Now he's Jewish. Oh, he is, isn't he? But I know, yeah, he said that. Beetlejuice is all fine, but he doesn't like Jewish people. Oh. And then, like, you got this clan, clan member as well. He's like, oh, I also hate them. So they didn't have that in common. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, which is actually pretty good. And again, like, I loved just how far he would go. Like, how it was setting all these things up. I think it was so important and so amazing. It's ridiculous. Like, the meticulousness of the uh, strain of comedy or whatever mm. that he's trying to produce is... Ridiculous. And it's, almost, as, it's as good as a genre can get. It goes beyond comedy and it goes into just mankind, humanity, where it's like people are all different and I'm going to get the, like, the whack pack. Like, I'm going to have the craziest people I can possibly find and just have them all in a room together. Yeah. And just hear what they have to say. Yeah. He would amazing. listen to anyone. Yeah. Which was kind of, and he was, again, so based and so kind of wouldn't really have any trying to push an agenda at all he's like hey just let's let's hear it and that's the other thing it's almost like because with that one for example it's like this should be offensive and whatever everyone in the room was having a great time blah 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 and it's like how respectful he was being to everyone he wasn't laughing I guess he didn't understand the absurdity of the situation which is what's funny but he's not laughing to these people's face Mm. or whatever wasn't really condescending he was the least condescending definitely and then what he's doing in that moment, 
it's entertainment because it's like the average person is just like, what is getting this? He, like in terms of he understands what entertainment is. I guess. It isn't necessarily hilarious. Yeah. The whole competition, but I find it's as entertaining as it can possibly be. And let's say you are like a uh, a trucker. Yeah. A guy who's been on the road oh for God. ten hours, and it's like. Thank you. Uh, thank it's you hard for this. That's what it's yes. like. Yes. And again, all the truckers out there will be like, literally eyes on the road, pumped because they're so entertained with what's going on. And it's kind of like it's the perfect little little thing to keep you awake or keep you entertained. You can be so tired, and then Howard puts all these things together, and it's like, okay, I'm not falling asleep. I'm gonna, I can't miss this. But then I'm watching it. I'm like, this is terrible, but it's a phenomena. I think your instincts would say it's terrible. I remember I was watching a lot of Howard Stern. I was like, this is wild. Well, this is my PC like, tendency. Is, yeah, yeah, I think everyone, I think the, uh, the average person has PC tendencies. Well, that's what I mean. I was sitting there watching the whole thing, but I was like, if I, because I was sitting out the front while I was watching it on my laptop, and I was like. If my name is here, this right now, yeah. or whatever, I'm gonna feel terrible. Like I don't want them to, and that's just an example. I didn't actually think they would, but I was like, if someone was to hear this, I would not feel good about that. Mm. Them thinking, oh, this person's actually like a resentful or hateful person or anything like that. But I'm like, I'm watching this. Is it wrong? It's old fashioned. It it's old fashioned. That's the, that's the scariest part. To be entertained by it, I was watching it and I was like, this is entertaining because it's mm. blowing my mind. I'm not laughing at this going, these are correct ideas <laughs> and <laughs> this is what we should do. Mm. But just like, this is a phenomenon. This yeah. is amazing. You're not going to get anywhere else. Yes. And again, I don't think anything like this would exist nowadays because I think it's people have advanced to a point where that would never take place again, I feel. I don't think that could exist today. And I don't think it would by any real personality type. Because basically what Howard is doing here is taking advantage of vulnerable people. And it's pretty easy to kind of crack down on that nowadays. Like beyond the whole uh, being race, racist or insensitive, just like at a baseline level of taking advantage of a vulnerable person is something that we've moved um, past. It is and that's the problem. Too. That's that's what's wrong with it, isn't it? It's like being in the schoolyard and it's almost like walking up to the, oh, I don't know if it is, just walking up to No, it's, it's like a oh, social outcast and being like, Do you want to come to prom with me? Yes, and it's like or it's even like the a whole bunch of the cool kids take yeah, the oh, weirdest kids yeah. and like have them in a room and say, Hey, let's make them let's see how they all go together, or let's make a show about these guys. But then it kind of moves Like, there's this weird space after that as well, where it's, like, genuine. There's, like, a genuine, like, no, I do... uh, Because, yeah, he's not malicious. This is going to be difficult to explain. Mm. But, like, in high school, for instance, like, I... You did, you you and a bunch of friends see who who could bring the ugliest girl to prom. (laughs) (laughs) Who can bring the 80 kilo woman? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who can bring the heaviest woman to prom? Imagine that's one of our friends. And you like at the door you have a scale and you make them stand on it without them even knowing. (laughs) And whoever gets the heaviest one gets like, everyone puts in $100, they walk away with like $600. Just wipe your feet on the mat as you come in on the other side of the door. There's like a... (laughs) No, but I was going to say, imagine if that was one of Howard Stern's bits. Yeah. Like, just, uh, like, it's, it's time for a new new segment, um, The Heaviest Woman, and they've just got women in there that come and stand on scales, and they, and they stand on it, and it comes up, like, 65, and they're all like, oh! <laughs> he would. Imagine that, though, like, he, he, I can, there's I a million of women listening to that, going, oh. But he had, um, did you watch The Smallest Penis? No. Which was crazy. They make him feel terrible. No, he's actually all right. Like it's so well done. Like he has like fifty guys come on who all think they have the smallest penis in like America, and they all get it measured. And there's just some guy who's like, I can't even see anything. And he's because how he keeps on bringing back this idea, like, oh, mine basically looks like that. Mine basically looks like that. But it's so fascinating just how willing people were to go on this sort of sort of show. Knows they're going to be I on have, camera. Yeah, I have to say that one. Because I also feel like, what, early 2000s, was it? Howard Stern? Or was before it Before that. Yeah, before that. I feel that was a time also when um, 
people were a little bit more mesmerised by a camera. And... Oh, and we got the opportunity to come on this camera. And it's like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm going to be on TV, I'm going to be on a show. I'm, I'm going to be showing famous. my penis. I'm going to be, yeah, showing my penis. I'll be willing to do anything. Um, I did... Th- I watched, like, a more recent... Um, Howard Stern as well he's interviewing Gwyneth Paltrow and this is something that blew me out about him like even though he's not doing the shock jock stuff yeah but like in his whole personality now because he's done a whole 180 on everything and he's like a very nice person now yes that's what he's trying to be and he's apologised for everything he's done in the past but he's so good at coaxing answers out of people still he's talking to Gwyneth Paltrow because she got hit on by Harvey Weinstein she had two films that she agreed to do. Mm. She like got mad at him and left and then told her boyfriend, Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt went back there to Harvey Weinstein and was like, don't put your hands on my girl. But like, if you ever make her feel uncomfortable. Brad Pitt threatened Harvey I Weinstein. Know. I can Pitt imagine Pitt. Harvey Weinstein just like jerking off in front of Brad Pitt and be like, hey, you're, you're attractive too. <laughs> <laughs> just straight up. It's like, hot. Oh, hot's hot. hot. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just really interesting the way that Howard talked to her about that and then kind of like, Twisted this. You couldn't never get that scoop or anywhere else that yes. with the amount of reality, like how it's like, oh, and the thing is, you're probably feeling in this situation, blah, blah, blah. And it's very imposing with feelings. Mm-hmm. So, the which are a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people are very timid about doing. Yes. You must have been feeling like this in this very insecure way. Mm. And she's like, no, I was actually feeling this way, but still on the same level of social abnormality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you wouldn't reveal that in a regular situation, but how it offers up this situation. Yes. So her answer to it is on that same level. But I guess you are looking at someone who, I think by the average radio personality, would be like, he's the greatest of all time. Like, he's the greatest we have ever done it. Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like, I know that, um, like, using an example, Charlemagne would always oh, say, like, oh. Howard Stern is the goal. Well, even, like, I want to yeah. be the black Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's the perfect interviewer. He's the perfect guy getting answers out of people providing entertainment, being a personality. He does everything perfectly. It's ridiculous. And anytime you go to put that on, you just know it's going to be complete yeah. abs- And it's like, it's, it's like watching the, the greatest as well. It's kind of like watching Jimi Hendrix or it's like listening to Nas. Like, this is the greatest guy to ever interview. Yeah. Because I don't think... Oh, I guess you could probably put someone like Joe Rogan up there. But different. Very different. different. Very, very different. The lens that that's through is a lot more respectable. Yeah. But Stern <clears throat> is... The greatest, the greatest radio personality of all time. Yeah. Or well, I guess just like in in, in, in that circle, instead of by any radio personality. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone that can really... Apart from Anthony Cumia, probably be close to that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's even we're kind of like, I guess... I don't know specifically, but I feel like Opie and Anthony would have been um, influenced by Howard Stern, and they kind of would have served as the uh, the standard for like what a podcast is nowadays. Well, imagine. I think a big part of it is like with radio, you've got all like this lyric and kind of like cute comedy, I guess you would say. Yes. And then you've got this guy who is raw, the rawest mm. thing ever, unapologetic, going in, and he shaped what a shock jock could be or whatever yes. I guess how are we going to be the next generation of shock jocks are we going to find a way to reignite this flame how could we one up Howard Stern what would be the one way we could do it oh dude I think it'd just be like we just go get some Nazi tattoos and then yeah. just do the nicest stuff possible uh, oh, but then I guess us unless we had like an actual Nazi on the show I, we we're going to go to that um, Trump supporting oh, uh, the vegan cafe. That. Yeah. What if we just had like a homeless person on with like yeah. mental illness and we just made fun of them for a, the episode? That could be an interesting one. And we're just kind of like playing mind games and um, like we're, we're talking in weird voices, like, <laughs> pretending to be the voices in their head. That could be a pretty good one. Just completely taking advantage of just a homeless person in Newtown. What, what do we have that they want, though? I feel like... Oh, we, 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 we basically coerce them. We could probably... Uh, okay. uh, offer them money. We'd be like, hey, you want $100? And we just literally take advantage of them. And we could just uh, find a way to, like, coerce them into taking off all their clothes. Um, 
sodomize them. Actually, you know on what? Camera. Speaking of um, I don't know. Sodomizing. <laughs> 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 now, watch this documentary. Yeah. It was called Seduced. Right. Have you heard? Have you heard mm-hmm. of this one? It's on Stan. It's mm-hmm. a new one. And it basically just follows this girl. She enters this um club. Yes. It's just for like friends or whatever. And then it's like about unlocking your full potential and whatever. And the more classes you take, the quicker you move up in the ranks. So she just signs up for all these different classes and whatever. Mm. You move up ranks, you become like an assistant teacher and then a teacher of the classes, but there's still always more classes. And it's run by this guy. Um, and he's seen as like this holy figure and whatever. And she goes further and further into it. Turns out it's like a massive cult. Oh, right. And then there's this thing where it's like this pyramid scheme. So this guy's at the top of it. And then he has like this harem of women who are his slaves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they actually are, they're knowing, they, they, they know that they're his slaves and whatever. Yeah. And then their job is to go and recruit more women. Mm. Kind so of like a pimp or whatever. Oh, actually, no, no, not even a pimp. They're well, just there for him. Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme to yeah. all just be like sleeping with him. Mm. So all these women say they're five here and they each get five and then blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. They get branded. They get dietary requirements. Is this based in a true story? No. This is real. Wait a second. This is a real documentary. Wait a second. Yes. What? Yes. It's not real. So this is 100% real. So this guy... Is yeah. it the actual character? Is he being yeah. interviewed or whatever? Not interviewed, but uh, um, they've got clips of him, whatever. He's a really weird guy. What's like, his name? Oh, it's escaping me right now. Yeah, yeah. But um, his whole thing... He just had this messed up kind of system of ethics. Yeah. And he, and he was just pretty much saying like to be taken advantage of or to like rape someone yeah. or anything like that. Like you can do anything within your physical ability and that's like ethically surpassable. But he just created this framework in which there was just like massive harem of women. Mm. There was always more coming. They were all like tortured and whatever. Um, but yeah, it was so, yeah, very heavy documentary. Gosh. And then at the end, it's like final statements. Yeah. And this is terrible, man, because I've just watched it, like these four episodes, I would probably watch the first two and then the next yeah. two, but it was just like this emotional ordeal. And I'm watching it with my girlfriend, this very last scene where she's, the chick in the documentary is giving her like closing statements or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, I just hope we can go from here. And she's saying like, stuff, her voice is breaking. And the, the background music comes in. And it's like, and it stops and it comes right in as soon as she starts talking again. So like for the last like minute or 30 seconds, mm. it sounds like she's rapping over this <laughs> beat and I'm laughing to myself, like sitting- Is it, is it, is sitting it just to be on, funny? Is no, it? no, it shouldn't be. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but whoever edited it just did a really bad job. In and then it's like, yeah, let's just have a UK drill beat over. <laughs> it's, it's like, like <laughs> She's like, she's like, yeah, the, the whole audio is over. It was just like such a hectic time. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest part is it starts and then it stops and she stops and she's like, mm. I just think boom, it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> But it's hilarious. I'm sitting there like behind my girlfriend trying not to laugh or whatever. And then she caught me laughing and I was like, well, I'm already done. Yeah. I may as well rewind it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did she find it funny? Um, definitely not as funny as I did. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty hilarious. You know what else yeah. something, something funny they did? I like laughing at vulnerable people. <laughs> yeah, I like the Howard Stern of my bedroom. <laughs> um, I, it's, a, it's a small penis contest. <laughs> Every single night I'm sleeping. <laughs> um, so the other funny thing in that documentary was whenever they'd cut away and have like uh, actors playing the people that were talking, yeah. the actors were always like worse looking than those people. So they have someone getting interviewed and being like, yeah, so I was doing this and blah, blah, blah. And then have like cut the flashback and then yeah. have like actors playing those people. <laughs> They're all really bad actors. So imagine watching that back and you're being like, 
do I look like that? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I want to create like a biopic of my life just so I can cast. You just get like the most unattractive people. Yeah. I <laughs> feel <laughs> like I've got Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay now. You're like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I'm so like, we're well, just like Yao Ming. It doesn't even this <laughs> big. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. It was yeah. It was a hectic documentary though. Very, yeah. Gosh, and it does. It does kind of bring up the idea of like I'm always blown away with how um, guys can take advantage of women like that. Or actually, like, how the women can fall for it? Well, it's easy, which is as with Ross. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a platform, and there's, it's, it's done all the time, like pimps and stuff like that. Did we talk about Rick Ross on last episode? Was that off pod? Off pod. Off pod. Should we talk about it? Yeah. Put Molly all in her champagne. She ain't know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that. So, whose song is it, Future? Uh, you know, I think a future song. So this song is called You Ain't No. Yeah. Um, and it's like future Lil Wayne, Rick Ross. Yeah. Um, Drizzy Drake. Anyway, it's that whole scum, remix, yeah. scum mob, scum bag yeah. mob. <laughs> and um, Rick Ross has a line in the song. Um. What did he say? I put, I put, I put Molly on in her champagne. I put Molly. She didn't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that. She didn't even know she that. She didn't even know it. <clears throat> so he's pretty much just saying he's roofied this chick. Yes. And she didn't even know it. But he yeah. said this on a track. He said this on Wax in maybe like 2014. Mm. But I think, um, I think there's some wild stuff said on a lot of tracks. By Rick Ross or just? Oh, just by, um, I think like uh, Rich Only Kwan said like there's some bad girls in this club might have to rape one. <laughs> no, he did. He did. <laughs> wow. Like straight up. Uh, this one's not as bad, but still funny. Yeah. <laughs> Drizzy, Drizzy Drake going. Um, Our two favorite artists are Rich Homie Kwan and <laughs> Rick, Ross. Rick Ross now. Yeah. And the Strokes. <laughs> <laughs> the Strokes, which we hope uh, women have, and then we take advantage of them after. <laughs> They're in that state. Drizzy Drake going. Um, Billy Eilish is pretty fine for 16 year old. <laughs> that girl right there when she goes to the bathroom and going through her purse or going through her phone. Oh, and that and that phone right. Oh, and that phone right there going through her phone as soon as she goes to the bathroom. Yeah, can't trust these hoes at all. <laughs> I and mean, you just got like the he biggest. He said that. Yeah, you got, the, so you got the biggest rapper in the world. Just like on a date with this random woman. She goes to the bathroom and he like picks up the That's phone really and goes right. to it. Because he's insecure. Which is good, which is pretty like transparent. It's very transparent. Showing his own vulnerability as well, which is he's been known for. I almost respect it. But then I think the problem with, like, specifically Drake, when he says some shit like that, he backs it up by being like, no, this is the right thing. There's never any, like, moral quivering from Drake. Yeah, you know, but I guess it's like... This is what I'm doing. I am insecure, but I'm, I'm not saying that this is wrong. Yeah. This just is. I can, kind of, I can kind of see where he's coming from, or where a character like that would be coming from. It's just insecurity. And he probably yeah. hasn't kind of... And it, 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 it is that. Mm. He hasn't expanded on it at all. Or it's just like, hey, I'm insecure, so I'm going to go through and the girl's fine. My problem with it is the way that he is the man. Yeah. And he is so insecure. He has a lot of lines like that. Mm. Um, where he's just saying, like, he doesn't trust women or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A lot of lines like that. And then doesn't falter from it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, you were, it's not a cautionary tale. Yes. It's like this guy, yeah, he must be doing everything right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you listen to that and you go, oh, I can't That's what I should do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I should go through this girl's phone when she goes to the bathroom. Yeah. So you start going through your girlfriend's phone when she goes to the bathroom being yeah. influenced by Drake. Yeah. And just seeing her writing notes, like, I don't know how long I can stay with him. He keeps laughing at really serious points in documentaries. He keeps, <laughs> he keeps talking about the strokes. <laughs> He does say he wants to keep all his toes as opposed to sleep. Which is which is good. Which is all, but it's also like it's pretty strange. 
this like if I was him, I would do. I would get yeah. on my toe. <laughs> and then toe. It's Imagine really saying that to your girlfriend, and she's like. Even now, I'll give up my toe for Dua Lipa. Mm. Nyum, nyum, nyum. Oh, she just takes her socks off. Okay, she's just got a nose up. Ten long years. <laughs> Ten long years. <laughs> Ten long years. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I think there are a lot, a lot of couples that um, all agree on like a whole pass. Do you know what I mean? Like having one girl that, one girl and one guy. That if the opportunity arose, you would let them sleep with. Yeah, I've. Um, Who would your whole pass be? I like, you agreed upon one for each. Zach Efron. Really? Wait, am I doing it right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, but that's a guy though. <laughs> uh, probably Julian Casablancas from The Strokes. <laughs> 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 This is so fun. Actually, you know what? This is so funny because I am such a masochist. Like, I'll love one thing for like two months and then on to the next thing. Um, and I seriously am obsessed with the strokes right now. Yeah. You're gonna listen back to this episode and be like, that's just the beginning. <laughs> it's gonna get worse than this, man. They're great. I'm mean, gonna have to get a different haircut. My music's gonna change. <laughs> and it's like in the podcast next episode, you're so distorted. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, the whole pass thing, yeah, I know people that have that. Uh, Zach Efron would be a very yeah, likely yeah. scenario. Imagine if you were like to your girlfriend, yes. yeah, maybe we should do a whole pass, mm-hmm. and, they're, and they're like, oh yeah, I was actually thinking like maybe you're like, yeah, probably Jewel Lipo, and she's like, oh yeah, I was thinking you're um, your friend Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we could be the whole pass. <laughs> All right, but I get Jewel Leafa. <laughs> yeah, and then Greg literally just comes out. Hey, Greg. And you hand her the whole pass and she just rips it up. She's like, I already used it. <laughs> <laughs> Three times. <laughs> Ain't that right, Greg? <laughs> Takes off her songs. <laughs> <laughs> Greg just walks into the room with a toe necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I know people that have it, and the man is the blue wiggle. Oh, that's some weird childhood trauma. I don't think he'd be cool with that, being with some twenty-something-year-old. Because you know, oh no, she's probably like forty. Ah, she just digs a wiggle. Fair, fair enough. If they're forty, like, yeah. Why oh, she did forty-year-olds grow up on the wiggles or no? What if that worked? Who's the, who's the uh, last age group that could have grown up on the Weagles? Probably. Maybe her husband's just really bad with the kids and she took them to go see the Weagles. Oh, and she just... And the kid was just like... She's just like... Oh, Anthony. <laughs> the Blue Weagle is pretty handsome. Anthony. Anthony. That's it. He's a handsome guy. You know what I mean? And he's tall. Kind of like... He, he seems friendly and nice. I remember loving the... Why is she Blue Weagle? No, the, I'm thinking of the yellow wiggle. Blue wiggle's kind of got the bluer eyes, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Shit, I don't know, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just going to keep breaking down the wiggles. Um, what is like, the wiggles? It's a kid show. Oh, wait, is that like four... It's the guys in skibbies. And they have like different colours? and Different shape colours, on their yeah. Head. And they're like, um, big red car. And they all wear different, um, turtlenecks. So yeah. one's red, one's purple, blue and yellow. Oh, okay. So it's not the show that I... Think. No, they don't have hats. It's not oh. a twerking show. That was... Oh, okay. The yeah, Wiggles New Orleans <laughs> <laughs> contest. No, it was different Wiggles. Wiggles, Wiggles, 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 Shrek. Mm. You get that boy Shrek. Yeah. I would get digged down by a seven foot o- older and he would be like Donkey Kong size. He's like, oh, I heard you like Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> would you do something with Shrek for the story? For the storyline, sure. Eh? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would like to be able to tell people, be like, oh, you yeah, mean Shrek. Oh, you, but you can't though. It would be like, a guilty pleasure. You do it, you like it, but you don't tell anybody. Oh, that would be a hard one. If Shrek came back today, if Shrek just 
Okay, or if an ogre existed, or someone discovered an ogre, and it just joined society. I think the world would fall apart. It'd be too much to handle. Yeah, I think... Would he become as really famous? Who'd just be doing like, oh yeah, ogres fighting like Jake Paul? I was thinking that, Brave New World style. What's that? The... It's... Have you... <laughs> have you read Brave New World? You know it? It's just a story, there's like, um, the... It's like in the future, mm. everyone falls into a cast from like, five to one. Um, and then you're brought up being completely assigned to a certain thing. So if you're in the bottom cast, you're going to be like a rubbish man or whatever. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to be a mechanic and then the top ones like athletes. But everyone's made perfectly comfortable with their role. Yeah. The story is they go to this savage land, which mm. is just a part of America that um, isn't within that society, I guess. So yeah. they're just like savages mm. and they bring one of them back. And everyone's like, oh my God, this person's amazing. And they all fall in love with this person. And it becomes like a star because of that. I mean, that's what an ogre would be like now. Wow, he gets to be so charming and be like, wait, what do you mean? Or so different, everyone would be like. Yeah, there's like a different perspective. Or just, vi- was it more of a visual thing or more about how they less like acted? Just how they acted, they're like, wow, this person is different. That'd be cool if like there was some sort of being or some sort of extraterrestrial being that came into, into like society and just thought completely different than like humans did. And everyone was like, wow, we didn't, we've never thought of it like that. Like there's all these like progressions made in science and mathematics and like renewable energy and stuff like that. Oh, energy. <laughs> <laughs> so body was taught me. So basically, we're just gonna, basically. we're just gonna turn into one great uh, giant swamp. We, uh, me and uh, Shrey gonna... Uh, me and Shrey gonna... <laughs> let's just say there's nothing underneath this kelp. This <laughs> my... Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, and then we can oh, hear, yeah. like, rumble. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, then like a big burst of, of shark waves. You like go to the oh. whole village. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Like, man, sure he's having fun of sex these days. <laughs> One of when it's gonna be me. You think there'll be a bunch of women that would go for Shrek? Yes. Or go for like an ogre type? Yes. Yeah, especially women over any killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess girls are just like tall men would probably go for the Shrek. Yeah, and Drake have like a massive strong. Shrek? Yeah. I swear to God, you said Drake. I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, Drake it sings have... really good and it tastes good. Tastes like maple syrup because it's from Canada. Mm, uh, no, that's a track. No, no, that's a, um. So anyway, me and Drake were making love last night. Um, <laughs> it was great. It was great. It was the best of that. Some will say it's the best I ever had. But, uh, but, but do you have the rubber on? No. Well, then that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Should we wrap it there, boys? Or like an hour ten? Oh, wait, wait, hold up. <laughs> I was with Drake last night. You know what he did? What? So, first of all, he was like bending me over backwards. He's like, we went to start from the bottom tonight. And then he was holding his crotch, and then he dropped the ball, and I heard him say, Booyah! <laughs> so, should we wrap there, boys? <laughs> scenario just concocted is the episode <laughs> title. <laughs> episode 15, uh, pipe. So imagine like <laughs> you're having sex with Drake. <laughs> and all you can hear is Hey he puts his balls. Oh, yes. Wait, <laughs> you should be saying like Drake too. Yeah. Booyah. Yeah. Booyah. Booyah. Yeah. Was Drake nominated for any Grammys? <laughs> He didn't have an album. He did. No, he didn't. Oh, it was an EP. No, he like, it was a mixtape, wasn't it? Where he's like in the shadows. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. 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 Was that an album? I don't know. Good question. Yeah. Should we rap, boys? Yep. Yeah. Anyway.
It's 444, four, four. Four, four. Jay-Z Hour, um, and we are the Sausage Boys. And uh, remember, Sausage Boys is sponsored by the they, Strokes. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Hobo because I've been acting like a hoe in the VA area.